Hey everybody, this is Drew. Welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be part three and should be the last part of my build of the Tamiya 148 scale M4 Sherman early production. And in the last video I left off where I had the whole thing painted. I had painted the tools and I uh, also got the mount of the shovel and this pry bar back here. And uh, I also had painted the, the wheel, the road wheels, with some uh, tire black from Vallejo. And so in this part, should we get it all done? But the first thing I gotta do is get the tracks on. And these type of tracks, uh, they're just link tracks. And Tammy has pretty specific instructions. So attach tracks in number order. So you start with a big piece on the top. Um, I'll be using some. I'll be using super glue uh, since I've got them painted, um, and you just work your way around. So this is step one. This piece here. Step two. These small linkages here, and then step three, and then four. Attach it to the bottom piece, and then jump over here to step five and add these linkages and then six this final piece so you do the same thing for both sides and each uh each set of tracks comes on its own sprue so all right wish me luck on this here we go so this first track has a little uh pinhole there's a little pin on this uh, roller return roller i guess is what they're called and there's a little hole in the bottom of the track. See so right here. Right there. So I'm gonna put a little dab of super glue in there. CA glue. Put a little here. Some here. It's perfect. And the way Tammy, uh, you know, engineered these uh, sprockets is that you can turn them, so you you're able to turn them, so you can uh, get the teeth lined up on the track sections. So. the tracks um, I actually messed up on this side uh, I used I used too many of these I used five on this side by accident I wasn't paying attention and then when I got over here there was a gap so I was able to pull this off <clears throat> pull this off and take out one link and then move this up um, 
fit really nice overall, but it, it seems like on both sides you do get this little, uh, there's a little gap right here, but that's okay, it's on the bottom, so uh, not a big gap. It's just, uh, I think it was just the way you press it, and, yeah. So otherwise, I mean, it looks all right. There we go. So I'll let it dry for a little while, then I'll assemble the, put the turret upper hole on top. And, uh, it's looking good.
Okay guys, I'm gonna start the weathering process and uh, I gave the model a coat of Vallejo polyurethane satin varnish. I did add a drop of the gloss or two um, just to give it a little bit of a, uh, help the wash flow a little bit smoother. Um, this is good stuff. Uh, I like, really like the polyurethane varnishes by Vallejo. You gotta thin them down. And uh, these are, I like them better than the the regular Vallejo gloss and semi-gloss varnish that's in a little bottle that's a white. Uh, this is really good stuff. It's a lot more durable. It's easier to work with because you gotta thin them down to the consistency that you need for your airbrush and uh, they get a good finish. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna do a pen wash. And I've taken some Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber and mixed it all up with some uh, this thinner here I got at Walmart. Um, and then in a nice wash with those two paints, it, uh, it's kind of a dark brown. You can see there. But I'm just going to go around some of the recesses and around um, the areas that are uh, well, the recess, the the handles, things like that, that will help make it pop a little bit. Okay, so just give it a shot. I'm going to take the turret off and do that first. So maybe go right here. So now I'm going to try something that I haven't really done before. This is a dot filter. So I've got my cheap oil paints and I just picked out some colors. Uh, I watched some videos and people recommended. I got some light greens, some uh, light sienna, some yellows. And so the idea is that you basically get uh, some color modulation on the vertical surfaces and also create some streaking effects. It's...
Mach das halt. Aber du zwei. everybody I did some final weathering off camera I used some pigments and for that I use these two uh, Vallejo pigments I have European earth and light sienna and uh, I just went around and added some dust to where I think that you know dust would accumulate where guys would climb on the vehicle and also as they're speeding through Normandy, France, it's going to kick up a lot of dust. Um, and so I also did the, the tracks and um, basically you just put the pigments on and you can use uh, airbrush thinner, Vallejo airbrush thinner as a fixer. And you just put that on there. And uh, I also have some. Let me find it. So, hang on. This is a Vallejo pigment binder, and you can use this too. It's just it's it kind of makes it real thicker, a lot thicker, like mud. So I did that up in the underside of the of the hull on the sides in there where a little bit of uh, dirt and stuff would accumulate in there. Yeah, so, but there she is, all dirtied up. It's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I don't like to do heavy, heavy weathering, um, but I figured a tank, uh, I'm going to try it and uh, let me know what you think if it's too much not enough um, but there she is I'm kind of happy the way it turned out though I think it uh, I think it looks realistic I didn't have any stowage for this kit and I could obviously get some and add some later um, I was gonna do some chipping but at this scale it's just it's hard to see and I don't want to overdo it so just some dust and dirt and you can still see you can kind of move that around a little bit but I really enjoyed this it was a fun kit and I really enjoyed building these uh, these tanks um, these are the 148 scale tanks and they're pretty cool they just they don't take up a lot of space uh, they're fun to build they go together well and uh, it looks just looks good on your shelf so uh, there she is all right there's the tools I use the underside as kind of a test area for the pigments and for the binders and stuff like that because really who's going to look on the underside but it got pretty filthy see the little headlights in there and for the headlights I just went in um, with a, a silver pencil and I just kind of went in there and did that the pictures I've seen these these headlights weren't very bright it's not like the, the ones on your car <laughs> where they're really shiny um, so 
and the tail lights uh, it's hard to see but I did the same thing but with a, uh, a red sharpie marker um, I think that it's just the, like the little top part is red and there we are Well, let me know what you think, guys. And uh, if you like my videos, please consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up, too. That helps the algorithm. appreciate it. I um, had a lot of fun doing this. And, uh, yeah, and I haven't made an antenna yet either, so I'll do that eventually. There we are. All right, everybody. I'll have a few pictures on the at the end here. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.